who likes coding because I don't. Today we're finally talking about creating a website, an author website with Wix. I said I would do this video like probably two months ago and here it is at last. This video is not sponsored, by the way. I use and pay for Wix myself, and I always have, but if you would like to sign up to use Wix, I do have an affiliate code linked down below. It doesn't cost you anything extra, it just helps support this channel. First, I wanted to talk about my own website journey really quick. I briefly used um, WordPress, a free WordPress website, um, until I switched to a self-hosted website with Bluehost. I did enjoy those options except for the fact that I did not like the coding aspect of it and any time I wanted to do any little personalization or change that I wanted to make I had to do a bunch of research to figure it out it wasn't a quick thing I think about a year and a half maybe two years ago I switched to Wix and I have loved it Everything is super easy to click and drag I'm sure you've seen some of the ads before YouTube videos it's just so much easier to use it's ridiculous <laughs> who wants to spend hours figuring out how to code we're writers here i know there are some people out there who do like to code or whatever build websites i'm not one of them and i think a lot of other people aren't we already we're already strapped enough for time here we don't have a million years to spend learning how to make the perfect website all right so let's start with the five main things that i think your website should have as an author in the very least these five things so the basics include an about me page, a, a books page. Even if you haven't published a book, you can put your, what books you're working on here, little snippets to get the excitement coming a little bit. Um, any services or a blog, you should have a page for that. And then um, a contact form and a newsletter sign up. So I'm gonna show you how to do each one of those things inside Wix. We interrupt this program to bring you nostrils. Just kidding. I have time code stamps to two different methods to create a Wix website. So those are both down below. Instead of doing one method, I did two in this video. We're gonna switch to my computer, which is right behind me. Uh, and then I'll see you guys back here when the video is done. All right, welcome to Wix. Here's the plans really quick and the pricing for each one of those. Um, you can choose business, e-commerce, e if you're trying to sell something, I would choose one of those. But for now, you can just use a free one. So I'm going to go ahead and sign up with a um, like fake email that I have, just so I can show you from the beginning. It's going to ask you some questions. This is the first method, which walks you through step by step a little bit more. And it kind of creates a design and a template for you from the get go. So you don't have to kind of make it from scratch. Um, so I'm just clicking other other here. And this is the, the two different methods that you can choose. So you can do choose a template or you can do this on the ADI on the left, which um, surprisingly they have author listed under there. And then here you can choose um, the different features that you want and it'll auto generate a website based on the features that you select. So I'm gonna select blog and then um, subscribe form and Instagram feed because I think those are kind of cool features to have but definitely look over all these and see if there's anything else that you want. Another cool thing is that they can import content. So for example, I just linked my Facebook and it pulled all of my images from Facebook. Most of them are Isla, but um, here I tried to incorrectly add a logo. I'll show you what that actually does in a second. Just choose a type of theme here. I chose high rise and then the colors from your logo I chose my book cover. This is a good idea if you don't have any preference for colors and you don't know where to go. And if you have a book cover um, of your own, you could even use one that's like a book that you really like and you like the colors on that book. You can just use that. You don't have to use the cover in your website. So here we're just gonna choose a website to design and or like a theme that we like, I guess. And then now it's basically just time to play around with it, scroll down, look at everything. This layout is totally different from the second method, but as you can see already, this, this site has the contact, the subscribe form, um, and it has the blog set up for you. So I'm kind of just showing you here how to um, tinker with things. And that's the biggest thing that I can recommend with creating a website is just to try things out and to see what you like because designing a website can feel a little overwhelming, especially if you've never done it before. Um, so just, this is a great way to try things out because 
everything's already laid out for you and they did a pretty good job of creating something so you can just bounce off of it. Most of the stuff that you can personalize is gonna be on this little menu, some type of menu on the left-hand side. And um, I kind of like this, this bar up at the top more than the bright or the big purple Vivian Reese, but I tinker with it later. You can bold, italicize, whatever you wanna do here. Uh, and then I'm just turning off those features, but I'm gonna add them back because I can't make up my mind. I'll make it up in a minute, I, I promise. You can also add a description here, which I thought was kind of cool. Like I said, this is kind of a more like simple method of designing a website. They make it pretty much as easy as they possibly could. Um, here is a gallery of images. So these are just generic images. I would highly recommend putting in your own images, your Instagram photos, or just pictures of you, your business, your books, you writing, whatever. Um, and you can search a lot of, um, Wix has a lot of media of their own that you can use. So just choose whatever you want. I kind of just, I just rearranged it. You can obviously rearrange it if you want to as well. So, um, Another thing that you can do is you can um, change the opacity. So if you want to have like a certain theme or whatever to your website, you can have all of your images, like your generic images, be, you know, sort of grayed out. You can choose a background color so it matches your theme. I don't know what this thing is doing over here on the left. It's just scrolling indefinitely. And then obviously you can replace the image, do whatever you want. I'm just going to delete it because it's taking up a lot of space and I don't think it's useful for anything. Um, and then I'm gonna delete this quote too because I don't need it, whatever. I'm just showing you how to delete stuff. <laughs> that is your book page. Obviously you would want to um, personalize that and edit it how you want. Wix is really awesome because they make it super easy to connect your social media platforms. So this is supposed to be your um, Instagram feed. I'm gonna go ahead and connect my Instagram feed even though this is just a test. Um, I end up connecting my feed, I feel like, to a lot of websites. And then here's your contact form down below. You can obviously personalize this as well. I feel like I'm gonna say personalize a million times. But um, I'm gonna turn the map off because most of us are online and we don't need a map. Uh, need a map. And then you can tinker with information people need to give to contact you. Here's your little blog um, post mm, reel, I guess, that shows your most recent blog post. It's not actually your blog. We'll get to that in a minute. And then your subscribe form down here is actually in the footer. So it's always on the bottom of every one of your pages on the website. You can move your panels like these. Um, they're actually called strips, not panels. So you can move them up and down however you like. Super easy, just the click of a button. Now we're gonna go to, um, to add a page here and we're gonna add the about me page. And you can choose um, from any, any one of these. They lay it out, make it super simple. And like I said, the subscribe form is down at the bottom because it's part of your footer. I'm gonna delete this button. I don't know, I don't know why we need that. And then here you can add another strip or a section. I guess this one calls it sections for some weird reason. It's usually called a strip, but um, I'm just gonna add a generic text block here and then you can choose the design or the um, like theme that you want for this. Edit it however you want. Talk about yourself your story, and then I think the font is really small, so I kind of kicked out the font, um, font size, just a smidge, which I'm actually gonna do this for the whole theme in a minute, and I'll show you how to do that. So let's go back to the home screen. Like I said, I noticed that all of the font was teeny, teeny, tiny, so we're just gonna customize that. Ooh, first up, the menu. You can have your menu disappear at the top, or you can have it stay um, static at the top. I kind of like it static. I don't think I do that on my own website, but, and then I'm just tinkering with colors here. I actually like that purple with the white. Um, bumping up that font size, cause I don't know why it's so small. All right, and then your menu bar up here. Um, you can do a lot of things with your menu bar. You can add as many pages as you want to your website, but they don't all have to be on your menu. Obviously you only want the important things cause your menu would be super huge. Um, so you can just click on whichever one, the setting icon, and you can hide it and then if you wanna make it visible again, boop, you just click that button. Now it's visible on your menu again. All right, here's the blog page. Um, oh, I think I jumped around just a smidge here because I did things out of order a little bit. So the about me page looks like it disappeared, but here's your blog. 
Um, this is how you're gonna create new posts, edit your posts. This is like your blog central. You can add pictures and um, just like any other normal blog platform. So pretty basic, simple. If you click on that block with the actual posts, you can edit how you want them displayed and everything. But I'm gonna add a books page now. So I kind of scroll through these and um, I just pick one just to kind of show you how it works. Um, and we're gonna edit this now. For this particular theme, I would have had to edit my image because as you can see, it does not fit in here. So I would have had to have more space. I would I would just have to make it a square image so that it can fit. So it doesn't automatically crop, unfortunately. And then I'm, you can just toggle these off right here. You don't have to delete them because um, when you have new books, you'll already have those templates sort of right there. So you can just add those in later. And then you always, always, always want to switch to mobile to make sure, see, yep, it didn't work. Because sometimes the layout, um, Wix does its best to make a mobile version of it. This was just a simple button I could click. And I don't know why I didn't automatically go to that one, but um, to reorganize it to make it look better. But yeah, you might have to move things around a little bit. Um, the blog one is pretty simple. Don't need to do it on that one. But um, the home page, usually since there's so many elements, Usually there is something on the home page that you have to move around or tinker with. But actually this one looked pretty good. All right, now we're gonna go to the second method. So um, this one, we're gonna choose a template. This is my favorite way to do it because I just like being able to customize it a little bit more. It's super easy to customize. So in my opinion, I don't know why you wouldn't, but the other one is pretty quick. That's the big perk to it, I guess. So they have tons and tons and tons of templates. You can look through templates that don't have anything to do with like author or business web pages or whatever. And because if it's like a layout that you like, you can just um, tweak it to fit your needs. This, I search for author. Um, and then this one caught my eye. It's pretty like clean, simple. I liked it. So we're going to design this one. And this is your loading logo that might play for a minute. I think this is a, like a nice, plain, simple, cute layout. Um, I didn't mean to click image there. We're gonna change the color. So if you kind of look on here, you're like, uh, I don't like any of these colors. You can change it. They have all these different palettes that you can choose from. So just pick one that you like the most. I kind of like this green one. Um, and then for some reason, it made me close it and reopen it to actually change the color. But yeah, I really like this color. To me, it's calming. I like it. Um, again, you can use a color similar to your book, use some inspiration from somebody else's book if you want. Um, and then I'm just going to go ahead and add an image. I probably should have added one that was square and not with a circle cut out, but you know, whatever. And then you can say whatever you want here. You obviously want to edit all of these things to make it applicable to you. So don't leave the generic name or whatever <laughs> at the top because people might be a little confused. Um, and then this one is actually, this button goes to, is anchored to something on the main page. So when they click that, it's gonna whoop, scroll all the way down your main page. Um, but here I'm just kind of going through, um, you, again, like I said, you customize this. I don't really know what other services you could have, but if you have them. Here's a chance to talk about buttons. Um, this one seems really small and awkward. I don't know why they did it like this. So you can increase the font. If you go to design, you can change all kinds of things, color, shadow, all kinds of stuff. But um, I'm just gonna make this button a little bigger so it doesn't look as awkward and then kind of move it up and stuff. So again, you can super easy to move things however you like. This big block of happy clients homes, you don't need it, this whole strip. I deleted it. As you can see, it didn't jump up like the rest of the stuff didn't jump up. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So sometimes you have to just like manually pull your next strip up. Um, all right, here's the newsletter sign up. Again, you should change that, what that says. Um, also, I removed this thing at the bottom that says like designed with Wix or whatever because I don't know why, I just don't think it's professional looking. <laughs> I don't know, that's just me. Yeah, so you can click on your subscribe form. You don't have to use the generic one. You can choose what you want people to enter. Um, these are the settings. And then it kind of um, walks you through like your email marketing. Like you can create an email campaign campaign through here. There's another way to do it that I'll kind of show you in a second. But um, you can, here you go. Here's another way to add a bunch of different whatever information that you want. And then you don't have to keep it like the super wide 
like they have a really long email, you can shorten this, move it around, make it look pretty, center it. Yeah, I like that better. It doesn't look as ridiculous. <laughs> um, and then we're just gonna scroll to the top, change the name, like I said, cause that's not my name. And then I'm just using generic author YouTuber here. Um, and then the clip art, they have some funny looking clip art right here that you can put, or vector art, excuse me, that you can put next to your name. I think some of these are kind of funny, but um, I just searched for quill and I found one that was writerly. It's purple and you're like, ew, gross, but you can change the color. So boop, 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 design, change the color. I just use black, generic. All right, that looks pretty good. Now we are going to, what are we gonna do? Um, the This tips page, Mm. you can put stuff here, like if you have YouTube videos or I don't really know what you would use this for. It is kind of nice to use some of these things as um, like inspiration for content that you can put on your website. So I would probably put my YouTube channel information here, some videos or like what it's about, things like that. Um, but we're just gonna add a page and this is gonna be our about page. And you're looking at this and you're like, whoa, it's totally blank. I don't like this. Don't freak out. Uh, I'm gonna walk you through, uh, like I said, adding things is super easy. You just click whatever you want, drag it over. This is just gonna say about. And then since we already chose a theme, you kind of already have an idea of how to make things look, if that makes sense. Um, so you're not really starting from scratch, even though this is a blank page. You can look at another page, get inspiration from that one and change it however you like. So um, the, where is it, the strip? We're just gonna add another strip. I guess I should talk about how a strip works. You can attach things to a strip and when you move that strip around, like you saw me adjust in the on the homepage, it'll move everything in that strip. So it's kind of like it clusters it, it groups it together, I guess. So I'm just gonna import some photos here. Again, I'm authorizing it because I just want everybody to see my Instagram. Uh, and then, you can, I'm sort of doing this like panel, like block panel. So I'm putting like a picture on the right and then some text on the left. And then um, you can add as many pictures as you want. You can resize this. You can resize the actual font size and then tell your life story. So everybody knows who you are. I'm pressing random buttons here. Okay. Um, and then I think that looks pretty good. You can expand this right here so you can fit another picture. I'm just picking a random picture. I would do a better job if this was really my website <laughs> of picking pictures that were actually, you know, indicative of who I was. So as you can see here in a second, yep. See, it's not attached to the strip. I had to drag it up to attach it to the strip. So now it's inside the strip. Um, but yeah, that's your about page. Here's your, my services page. You couldn't really see it at the bottom, but um, that one had a block of services that you can edit. Here's your contact form. Like I said, it's like clean, easy. I like this layout. I might actually do something like this, redesign my own website <laughs> to, to do to look something a little bit like this. Just replace the picture. You would obviously change your address and things like that. But yeah, that's your contact page. Um, like I said, always switch to mobile. Scroll through, make sure everything looks good. Again, this button looks weird. I don't know what's I don't know what this button's problem is. Um, but yeah, you can just Reorganize everything, make sure, double check. You don't want anything weird or, or for someone to want to contact you and they can't. All right, just click publish and that's it. It's live, woohoo, yay. Um, and then I realized that I didn't make a book page. So this part is takes a little bit longer because there's a little more elements to it. So again, I'm just gonna make a page from scratch. And as you can see, it actually, it adds that to your menu bar up at the top. I'll talk about that again in a second. Um, and I'm adding a panel here, changing the color, resizing. I'm fast forwarding here, obviously. I wish I worked this fast. And then I'm just gonna add something that has columns. It says services, but you can add whatever you want here. So, um, because I want it displayed on two columns. And for some reason, I do not like when things are you see how it goes all the way from the left to the right? It's stretched, I don't like that. So I'm actually gonna make it the width of your like browser, if that makes sense. Um, just cause I, I don't like things spread out too much. Uh, yeah, tweak with the, the layout. I'm adding the um, uh, my books here, my cover. 
changing the colors here to match my theme a little bit because it was pink. That's not part of my theme. And then instead of having to do all this again, I'm just gonna duplicate this and delete the other one and then switch that over to the right. So I did that a little fast, but um, yeah, that was all from the like customize menu. You can do all that stuff. So yeah, um, these buttons right here, you do need to link this to the page. So don't forget to do that. We have to make the pages for the books, um, but don't forget to come back and link those to the actual page books, book pages, the book pages. <laughs> um, and then I'm creating the book page here. You saw in the menu briefly that I added this as a sub menu item, I think, um, to the books page up at the top. So your menu bar um, up at the top, if you kind of hover over it, it'll show the Elysian Prophecy book page underneath that. And then just tinker with things, add a synopsis to your cover, make it look pretty. Um, I would add, I'm just gonna add a generic button here, but I would add customized buttons like um, your Amazon button, your Barnes and Noble button, add to Goodreads, etc. And then you can just make a copy of this so it's, the layout's already done for you and then make one for your other book and that's it. And really quickly here, I wanted to, so that's part of making a website. This is the free website but you can come in here and they'll walk you through how to set everything up. So your SEO, how to make sure, you know, like your, you know how websites, if you go on Google, they'll say, they'll have like their menus almost. So it'll say the website name and then it'll have different like pages. You can customize all of that. Um, it's really nice, it walks you through it. It feels like rocket science. Actually, no rocket science. <laughs> but this can get a little out of hand and confusing and especially if it's not something that you're, it's not something that you're interested in. So, um, and then you can do all your email marketing. Like I said, you can do it right here. You can create a whole campaign and that's it. A couple things really quick in terms of pricing. Um, if you self host, usually you get, I think like with the basic plans or whatever tier you decide to go to, usually you get like five websites that you can put under that you can like host all at once and it's all paid for those five. With Wix, you pay per site. So. Um, if you do plan to have like five websites, a self-hosted option might be your best bet. If you only plan on having one or two websites like me and your most authors here, Wix is gonna be comparable in price or cheaper and it's gonna be way easier to use. Time is money, so even if it is just a little bit more money, it's so much easier to use, it's ridiculous. All right, I hope that was all helpful. I hope you're ready to tackle your author website. I hope this alleviates some stress behind it. But if you would like somebody to create an author website for you, um, just contact me. I'll leave my email listed down below. Just let me know if you're interested and then we can talk um, packages and different things that we have going. Feel free to check out the Happy Writing community over on Patreon. There's bonus content there. Um, I have all kinds of stuff planned, some exciting things. You get um, sneak peeks. You get to be among the absolute first to read any snippets of my upcoming works, which, oh my gosh, I'm so excited to dive back into writing. We just have all the house stuff still going. But you can take a peek there, browse the tiers. Um, you can look through posts. You can look at the titles of the posts. You might not be able to read them, but you can still, still see the titles to see if it's something that you're interested in. If you ever have a suggestion for another video, um, just let me know in the comments down below. These videos are made for you, so I wanna make sure it's content that you guys want and that is helpful for you. All right, I will see you guys next week for another video. I'll be talking about Scrivener um, and announcing kind of the September series I have planned next week. So I'm actually gonna have two videos out next week. I will see you guys then. Happy writing.